So by now you've probably heard the term social distancing being thrown around in the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus situation. And I wanna talk briefly about um, what it is and what is the actual impact of it, whether it's quarantines or social isolation, and how does that affect the whole point of flattening the curve, which you've probably heard about as well in relation to not overloading healthcare services around the world. And I'm gonna dive into a bit of a screen share in a second. Um, let me actually go over this side and move here and I'll put it up here, just there so you can see it. And I'm gonna go on to a um, resource that was shared with me by a close friend and it's on the washingtonpost.com website. So this is not mine, I'm not claiming this. Uh, it's just a very powerful visual to highlight this point of social distancing and what the actual impact is. All right, so let's dive in now and have a look. Now, as I scroll down, these graphs, or these, these visuals, sorry, that you're gonna see, are basically showing the rate of infection across a population of people. Now, the little brown dot here, little brown dots are infected as they come into contact with people, and when the brown dots turn pink, that is when they have recovered. All right, so as we can see in an unchecked, moving, non-isolated population, the spread of the virus is incredibly quick. And the effect of that, as we can see here, right, is quite a steep exponential curve. I'll just rerun it again so you can see. So over time, as they start coming into contact with each other, that curve starts to increase very sharply. And if you imagine a healthcare's capacity, a healthcare system's capacity is right down here, you know, very quickly on a steeply increasing curve, a lot of people will get infected in a period where the healthcare system cannot cope, where they don't have enough ventilators, where they don't have enough beds, and where they're not able to support the rapid increase in demand. Remember, this is on top of all usual emergencies as well, like, you know, car crashes or existing health problems or whatever. So there is a, a, a real impact of that on healthcare systems. Now, this example shows us what happens when we put a full quarantine in place, right, to restrict movement, but then open up that quarantine over time as obviously you have to, you know, you can't keep people quarantined forever, so at some point you're gonna have to open it up again. And what happens when it opens up is then it will very quickly start to spread and you'll see that impact. And the graph then that occurs is a slower increasing curve at the start with a more sharp increasing point at the end and then obviously quite a quick drop off, all right? So that's a full quarantine lockdown and then opening it up. Now the next one that we look at down here is what happens when a quarter of the population continues to move around while the other three quarters adopt social distancing. All right, so here we can see some people standing still and others coming into contact all right, with others. So some moving, some not moving. And we can see the spread is a lot slower, but it's still starting to increase quite rapidly once it reaches, reaches a certain point. Now, let me run that simulation again. Obviously, a lot of it depends when do people come into contact with others. So every now and then someone can hit a little cluster that will infect quite a few people at once. But overall, you can see that the, um, the rate of increase is comparatively pretty low. It only starts to speed up a little towards the end, but obviously then you also get the impact of um, people once they're recovered are immune, and that has a counteracting impact to the spread, the spread, sorry, because we spread it out for long enough, right? Now finally, what happens here when only one eighth of the population are moving? So with a, a much heavier uh, social distancing effect, we can see that the spread, again, as people start to be cured, we maintain a much more stable baseline. It means healthcare systems can cope a lot more and as more and more and more people build up an immunity that again has a downwards pressure on the rate of infection. So this is what we talk about, right? These are the, the graphs that we talk about uh, when it comes to social distancing, why that's important, 
Okay, an attempted quarantine, actually not that much of an impact. It just drags it out a bit, but it's the people taking responsibility over time and keeping away from others, minimizing contact, protecting themselves by washing their hands, not touching their faces. You know, all these things that will reduce the spread. That's what's really gonna make a big difference, all right? So keep this in mind. That's the, you know, the attempt um, that is uh, being put in place by governments when they talk about social distancing to protect the healthcare systems and keep that volume down low. If this video has made sense and also if you feel it is valuable and it's something that people need to see and need to know, please hit share down below. Share it far and wide with as many people as you think will benefit. And if you have got something out of this as well, um, please hit like. I know it's not obviously the type of video that you necessarily enjoy watching, but um, you know, hitting like will increase engagement so more people do see it, which in turn has a positive impact on more people taking things like social distancing a bit more seriously. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face, protect yourself to protect others around you, particularly the vulnerable, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.